In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you guys to Form Basics. Um, whenever you go to a web page and you enter in some data, like whenever you go to Facebook, you type in your username and password, or whenever you go to Google and you type in something to search for, you are using what is called a form. And forms are used in web pages to get user input and process that. So in this tutorial what I'm going to show you how to do is create your own form that is going to get a username and a password and it's going to submit it to a file. Um, there's some key concepts to understand about how forms work uh, so you'll understand exactly what's going on. Um, whenever you fill out something and you submit it you're sending it off to a server-side script uh, like a a JavaScript or uh, some sort of PHP code or some code fusion or some ASP a server-side technology is going to take your user input and it's going to process it. It's going to put it into a database or it's going to check it against a database or it's going to do something with it and then it's going to tell the the browser where to continue from there. So now that you understand sort of what forms are used for and and how they're used I'm going to show you how to create your own. Uh, we're going to use Dreamweaver to to do this and we're going to use uh, the insert column over here and we're going to click on form. It pops up with, uh, with this window and it gives us a few options of what we want to do with our form. The action is the actual file that we are going to send our data to. In this tutorial I'm not going to show you how to handle the data. I'm just going to show you how to build the form to submit the data to a file. So the file that I'm going to type here doesn't actually exist but in future tutorials I will show you how to use PHP to handle some form data. So I'm just going to say sample handler dot php and there's two methods we can use here there's the get method or the post method the get method is used to actually do what it says get data and in this tutorial we we don't want to deal with getting data we're going to deal with actually posting data and what posting data does is just like it sounds it, it posts data to an action or to a file somewhere to process it. Uh, we're going to leave the encoding type blank for now. We'll give it a name of sample input. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to hit the return key a few times to give some space in between the closing and opening form tags. And you can see here that it's given us an action, a method, and a name. So I'm going to save this and right now we have created the foundation for a form. Um, there's nothing inside it right now but this is the the beginning step to creating a form. Um, so now we want to enter uh, some some pieces to collect some data. You can see here that there are many different options on what we want to use to collect our data from the user. Um, in this specific example we are going to use a text field. So you can see here that it pops up with um, this window that gives us some options on what we want to do and what we want to use our text field for. Um, we can use it as just text, um, a password, uh, the radio and checkbox and Im image and file and hidden. Those, those don't matter for this specific example. So we're just going to leave text and we're going to call this text field username and I'm going to show you uh, what value is but usually you would leave you would leave this blank but I'm just going to type this in just so you can see this is a value and what that's going to do is it's going to put some text inside of the text field itself when the page is loaded um, you could say actually let's say enter enter username that way it'll tell the user what they need to do. And we're going to give it a size of 30 
and a max length of 30. The max length uh, that is used to set a max amount of characters that are able to be input into this specific text field. So we're going to say OK and we can see that it has inserted this inside of our form um, for us to use. So now we're going to repeat the same thing with uh, with a little twist. So go and click on text field again, and at your type this time, choose password. And what that's going to do is it's going to hide the text that is being typed inside of our text field. So we're going to give it a name of password. We're going to give it a size of 30 again, and we'll say uh, max length is going to be 30 as well. So what we have here is two input uh, form items. One is of type text and one of is of type password. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to run it in our browser so you can see what's going on here. So you can see the value is enter username and here is the password text field. And you can type a password in and it's going to be hidden. So you can just type some text and you can see that that is hidden. And so you can see that we have our text fields but if a user is just coming to this page they don't know exactly what is going to be is going to be done with these text fields so we're going to give these a label I'm going to take this value out right here and I'm going to use <clears throat> the label button over here click on label and then click inside the opening tag for label on type 4 and what this is going to do it's saying this is a label for username. So what you do is you type in the name of the input that you want to link this label to. In between the opening and closing tag of label, I'm going to type username with a colon here. And now I'm going to repeat the same process for the password. I'm going to say label for password. And I'm going to put password. I'm going to run this so we can see what it looks like in our browser. And now we have created a form that allows us to input a username with a password. Now we have the text inputs and we have the labels but we don't have a way to actually say okay I'm done now I want to submit. So we need a button that's going to allow us to submit this data to this action right here and I'm going to add some break tags in between these two inputs so we can move them down a line. I'm just going to put one break tag just right there and then I'm going to also put one after the password input. And now I'm going to go over here to button and I'm going to make this type a submit and we don't need to give it a name or a value. I guess we could get a value. We could say submit data. If you don't give it a value, uh, the default value is going to be submit query, but we're just going to leave it as submit data. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to run it. And now we have a form that allows us to put in a username and it allows us to put in a password and it also allows us to submit it to a file that doesn't exist right now but if this file did exist it would have some PHP code inside of it to handle the data that we submitted and that is all the time I have for this tutorial uh, continue watching and we will go through some more form elements and we will check out exactly what can be done with some more advanced form elements other than text fields.